There is no name like the name of the Lord our God. Your name, let the nations sing it louder. On Wednesday evenings, we've been walking through the names of God. And this evening, we will continue. We're going to be in Exodus chapter 17. I want to begin with this iconic picture of Iwo Jima. Eight square miles in the Pacific that was battled over for five weeks and more than 26,000 U.S. soldiers would die for this eight square miles in order to plant our flag as a banner declaring that we had conquered. A banner is a sign of authority, commitment, allegiance, and even victory. A banner is a sign that we have won the victory and our God reigns. Yahweh Nisi, the Lord is our banner. In Exodus chapter 17, let me give you the context. So uh, just, just so you know, Exodus 14 is coming out of Egypt. That's the parting of the Red Sea. Exodus 15 is the song of Moses. That's just the celebration song. And then you get into 16, and uh, they are in the wilderness, okay? So, so uh, right, we've just had salvation out of being prisoners and slaves in Egypt, and, and Israel is on their way to the promised land. And there, there's a typological picture here of salvation, that coming to Christ and salvation, that, that God has set you free from the slaveholder, and yet you are not yet to the promised land. There is the wilderness. The promised land is heaven. It is ultimately our home, but there's the wilderness in between. And so in 16, right, the people of God, they, they are in the desert. There's no food, and, and the Lord provides manna. And in 17, there is no water, right? And, and they are thirsty, and they begin to grumble and complain. They are in the desert, and, and we are told in the first seven verses of chapter 17, right, that Israel began to test God. They were asking the question of verse seven, is the Lord among us or not? And, and obviously, there's the immediate physical need, but what we learn by the questions that are being proposed, that the, the, the text says they tested God, they grumbled and began to complain, has the Lord brought us out here just to die? And so God provides graciously, even in the midst of their lack of faith, God provided, told Moses to go and, and to strike the rock and water comes out and they get a drink. Could you imagine what that drink, you know, tasted like, the way that it was refreshing right there in that moment? They are weary. It is dry in the desert, okay? Now look at verse eight. Then... Amalek came and fought against Israel at Rephimadin, okay? Immediately, right there, they have just walked through the desert. They have manna provided. They've been grumbling and complaining. They have gone periods of time without water, and, and they are famished. And then immediately, they are attacked by Elimelech. The enemy attacks Truth of the matter is, is, guys, life is hard enough on its own with my own sinfulness and difficult circumstances. That is enough for me to grumble and complain and to have a lack of faith. But then you throw on top of that an enemy that comes in and seeks to kill and destroy. 
Opposition that is unwarranted, just attacks. There's a sneak attack right on the heels of already being a little malnourished and famished, just in the journey of life. This is, Israel hasn't done anything wrong. They grumbled and complained, a lack of faith, but all they have done is come out of Egypt. This is the salvation that the Lord has provided, and God is taking them to the journey where God wants to get them. And along the way, the enemy attacks. You know, our battle is not against flesh and blood, okay, but against the rulers and forces that, of dominion that come against us in heavenly places. So with that, with the enemy's sneak attack, listen to verse nine. So Moses said to Joshua, choose men for us and go out and fight against Elimelech. Tomorrow, I will, stand, I will station myself on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. And so Joshua did as Moses told him and fought against Elimelech and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So it came about when Moses held his hand up that Israel prevailed. But when he let his hand down, Elimelech prevailed. So picture the scene, right? Moses goes on the hilltop. He goes up to the top of the hill. And down in the valley is the war that is waging on. Again, Israel is famished. They have to immediately go into battle. The enemy is ready to overpower them. And Moses says has to be according to God's plan and acknowledgement. Otherwise, why would you go do this? Moses goes up and says, I am going up with the staff of God. Now, the staff up to this point, right, has turned into a snake. It, uh, the, the staff uh, brought in the plagues there in Egypt. And then the staff, really, it's the staff of Yahweh, uh, parted the sea. Moses and the staff, water came out of the rock. So this, this staff is not any ordinary shepherd's staff. This, is, this has been a sanctified, this is Yahweh's staff, okay? Ultimately, it would go in the uh, Ark of the Covenant. That staff, Moses is going to take it to the top of the hill, <clears throat> and he's going to hold it up as a banner, okay? And while the fighting goes on down below, ultimately, picture this, that it is not by might, it's not by skill, it's not by the powers of the warriors that determine the outcome. Rather, it is solely by whether the banner of the Lord is high and lifted up. Now, I want you to quickly think of our own battles in life, within our relationships, in our marriage, with our children, in our friendships. Think of health situations, work situations, our purpose and our destiny, our drive. Think of all the conflict that rages on around us. Now, there are two extremes in understanding what's going on here. Uh, there is one side that thinks that the only part that matters is Moses on the mountaintop, lifting up the staff, as if everyone else was just sipping tea down below. But that's not what occurs. Joshua and the men have to go out and battle they have to fight. They have to roll up their sleeves and be obedient in the conflict. They have to do all that they know to do and go out and face the enemy. What you don't read is Moses stands up, holds up the, the staff, and everyone else just sits around and plays tic-tac-toe. That's not what occurs, right? 
Now the other extreme, right, is to solely focus on what is happening in the valley. That is focusing on our own strength, our own merit, our own skill, our own power, all the training that we put into it, that's what accomplishes the goal. That is certainly not the point of this text, right? Now, you see this balance and the importance of this balance in Scripture. Take, for example, Philippians 12 and 13. That says that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But as we do, we are to recognize that it is God who is at work within you. That is both the mountain and the valley. That is steps of obedience in his strength. Second quick lesson that I think we can learn from this text is, in verse 12, Moses grew weary, didn't he? We all know this part. Moses' hands got heavy. If any of us just tried to hold your hand up, even the duration of my talk here, you would quickly set it on the pew in front of you, that sort of deal, right? Moses is holding the shepherd's staff, the staff, He's trying to do it with two hands. And quickly, he has to let it down and rest. But the battle goes the other way. So what happens? Aaron and her come up and they give him a seat. And then they come and help and prop up his arms. The spiritual battle can make every one of us weary. When, when decision or victory delays or drags on, when you have been praying for a situation for months, years, you don't see any movement. How quickly we get discouraged. The weight of it. Even something, Moses could hold up a staff, right? But the weight over time made him grow weary. He needed people, and we need each other. We need the body of Christ. That is to bear one another's burdens, to come alongside, to hold up one another's arms in the spiritual battle. Now, at the end of this, after the battle is won, verse 15 says, Moses builds an altar and declares, Yahweh Nisi. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. I need to quickly fast forward into Numbers 21 because there's another very important text in the Old Testament. The people of Israel sinned and the Lord sent a plague uh, that that came upon the people and Moses cried out on behalf of the people and and Moses... uh, And God said, I need you to erect a tall pole. And on top of that pole, I need you to put a serpent that was biting the people. And I need you to put that atop the pole. And everyone who turns and looks at that pole, at that banner, at that moment will be healed and be saved from the curse that had been put upon them. Fast forward to John chapter 3 where Jesus tells Nicodemus, you must understand, just as the bronze serpent was high and lifted up um, in Numbers 21, so too must the Son of Man be high and lifted up. Now, why do I tell you all of that? Because the truth of the matter is, is Jesus Christ is our banner. Okay? He is our banner. You can, you can fast forward all the way to the fact that he is now the ruling, reigning king in heaven and that his exaltation went from the cross uh, to the ascension to the right hand of God the Father. That, that when we say the Lord, Yahweh Nisi, we mean that Jesus Christ is our banner, that he is the one who meets us in the middle of our spiritual warfare, in the midst of, look, we have enough trouble on our own, and then you pile on top of that that we have an enemy that fights against us. Do you need help? I need help. At that moment, you and I are to remember Yahweh Nisi, the Lord is my banner. I will, in, in obedience with my faith, I 
I will take those steps, but at the same time, I will look to the top of the hill from where my help comes from. I will remember the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, that he is the victor, that he is my banner, that he rules and reigns in heaven, that he is the head of the church, that every form of principality has been placed underneath his feet. He reigns above it all. There is no God like our God. He is our banner, Yahweh Nisi. Amen? You guys pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Nisi, we cry out to you. This is your name, your disclosure to us of who you are, Yahweh Nisi. You are our victory. And we move underneath your flag, your reign. We trust you, Jesus Christ, the ruler over all, and that you have accomplished through your death and resurrection and ascension, and that you sit at the Father's right hand, that you have destroyed every work against us, every work against us, and you are now calling us to move in victory, believing with the assurance of faith of what you have accomplished. Yahweh Nisi, help us to walk in that truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.